G'day everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a great day or a nice night. It's Tuesday night here in Australia and it's dinner time for us. So I thought I'd show you this week what I actually do with some of the food I get from the food bank and how I actually turn it into meals to feed everybody. Tonight I'm making bean stew, baked bean stew actually is what I call it. And it's basically where you take the humble can of baked beans. This is the one I got on Friday. You'll probably remember in my food bank haul and stretch it and turn it into a meal to feed more than a couple people. And the way I do this is I add vegetables to it to make it more of a meal. I suppose um, you're sort of jazzing it up if you like in a way as well. So you're making the flavor a bit more interesting. Uh, you can make it as spicy as you like as well, depending on the ingredients you add to it. So you'll see I've got all the ingredients set out here that I'm going to add to it this evening. So I usually start off with a can of baked beans. One's usually enough, even to feed a f more than a few people. It usually feeds all of us. Uh, and I add to it then usually a chopped up onion. I've got a carrot this week, two potatoes, I've got half a choco. Now these are all from the food bank haul I got on Friday, you'll remember. And this little wedge of pumpkin, I'm going to chop that one up as well. So I usually start with some type of onion. If I've got garlic, I'll add a clove of garlic as well. Uh, you can also add in curry powder or chilies if you like it a little spicy, things like that. And then I usually bulk it out with starchy vegetables. So mostly I use potatoes. Tonight I've got two, but you can just put in one potato if that's all you've got. Uh, usually I add a carrot as well. because I find if you add a carrot, it adds a little bit of sweetness to it. And again, tonight I've only got one carrot, only because this one's huge. <laughs> so I've got one carrot, two potatoes, an onion, and uh, yeah, like I said, some pumpkin. If I didn't have pumpkin, you could use sweet potato. Uh, if you didn't have pumpkin or sweet potato, you could make it purely with just potato and carrot. I think at the very least you need sort of like onion, potato and carrot to make it into a stew with the beans. And then I also like to add some green vegetables to it. So tonight I'm going to put in half a chopped up choco. And quite often I use frozen veggies from the freezer if I've got some frozen peas or frozen green beans. I don't have any on hand at the moment, but I do have the can of baby peas, again, that I got from the food bank on Friday. So I'm going to put in some extra baby peas just for some extra vitamins and minerals and fiber and again to bulk it out a bit quite often i'll serve this stew with rice on the side or sometimes i even end up putting in a little bit of dry pasta to cook in the stew again just to bulk it out and make it more of a meal uh, tonight i'm going to take a shortcut though if you remember I think it wasn't last Friday, but the week before I got some frozen rice from the food bank. So I've got some ready cooked rice, which I think I'm going to add to it once I start to cook everything up. So we'll see how we go. Uh, first of all, I'm going to chop everything up now and I'll come back to you and then we'll start cooking it up and I'll show you what I actually do. Right, back again. I've chopped up the pumpkin and potato, carrot and the onion, you'll see. I've actually diced them up quite small. Uh, a good tip is something my mum always used to tell me, actually, was the smaller you cut something, the quicker it cooks. And it's very true. So if you're in a hurry and you want things to cook faster, if you chop them up pretty small to begin with, it'll be less cooking time. So I want this to cook pretty quick tonight for me. I'm running a little bit late and I want to get food on the plate for everybody. So yeah, I've chopped it up pretty tiny with the dice. The pumpkin will actually uh, get all soft and mushy as it cooks and break down. Uh, the potato, I don't mind if it stays in chunks a little bit more. And same with the carrot. 
So yeah, I'm, I haven't actually chopped up the choco as yet. I'm going to add that later on. So I'm going to start by going over to my fry pan and starting to fry off uh, the onion to begin with. And then I usually add in the potato and pumpkin next. So let's do that now. Right, we're back at the fry pan now. I'm going to, I've got a, just olive oil in the fry pan. Uh, this is actually some olive oil from the food pantry. And I'm just going to put in all the onion to begin with into the fry pan. I like cooking in cast iron. So I'm going to chuck in all the onion. And I'm going to just stir it around and brown it a little bit. I have to wait for the temperature to come up a little bit. We well, need a little bit of sizzle. I'm also going to stick in the potato as well because it's going to take a pretty long time and I want to kind of brown it a little bit with the onions at the same time to give it a bit of flavour. I'm just sticking all the potato in. Two potatoes is a fair bit when you chop it up so maybe one potato might be plenty if you didn't want quite the quantity. So the idea is to fry off the onion and to cook up the starchy vegetables first and then to add the beans back to it because remember the beans are already cooked so you don't actually need to cook the beans, you really only need to heat them through. So this is going to take a few minutes, or probably longer than a few minutes, to cook all this up and brown it and get a nice golden colour on it. And it's probably best not to walk away so it doesn't burn and just keep a, a bit of an eye on it and stir it all the while. Now I do also have a little bit of butter chicken flavour sachet. I don't know if you recall me getting this one from the food bank. Uh, would have been, I think, two or three weeks ago now. And I've got a little bit left that I haven't quite used. So I've added some water to the packet and I'm just going to add that. Because it's got lots of um, really good spices in it, onions, ginger, that type of thing. And it smells really good too. Now I'm going to add the pumpkin. So you'll see it's starting to stick a little bit on the bottom, so I'm going to put in two cups of water. And I'm going to let it simmer and bubble away for oh, might, maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll see how, how it goes. We need it to start cooking the potato and the pumpkin. So I'll come back in a short while and uh, give you an update then. I should also mention you can add stock. Um, you don't have to add just water, but I'm doing it as if you didn't have any stock on hand. Um, very frugal, just um, yeah, just adding some water. But if you've got 
chicken stock, beef stock, veggie stock, any type of stock cube even you could chuck in to give it a bit of extra flavour would be nice. So yeah, I'm going to let this bubble away for a little while and I'll come back to it shortly and probably add in the carrot and the choco by that stage. Oh, and I should also just point out, so if you don't have olive oil to fry off the onion, that's okay. Just use whatever you've got, like if you've got some butter or lard, a bit of bacon grease, or if you've got uh, even ghee. If you don't have any fat on hand, you could also just saute in a little bit of water. The idea is just to give the onion a little bit of caramelised flavour to make everything a little bit more interesting. I'm just um, lucky at the moment I've got this amazing big um, three litre can of extra virgin olive oil that I picked up at the food bank. You'll remember it might have been nearly a month or longer ago now, maybe even two months. I'll link the video up above if I can remember which um, food bank haul it was now. But yeah, it's been amazing help and I've been using that sparingly. It's been about 10 minutes now and the pumpkin's starting to break up and break down rather and go into the water and make a bit of a sauce. So it's usually about this stage, the potato's starting to get a bit soft too, that I add in the carrot. So that's what I'll do now. So it's all been bubbling away now for probably another five, seven minutes, I think. I've added the carrot and it's starting to look really good. It's starting to break down. So this is what you want to happen. You want the pumpkin to fall apart and basically turn into like a thicken up the water and make it into like a sauce. So about this time, I'm going to add the choco now, I think. I've actually um, diced it up into like small chunks. Now I've added a little bit of the butter chicken seasoning sachet I had in my fridge that I hadn't used up from the other day. But you can also add, if you've got like Mexican type spices, you could do it like Italian style with more adding a little bit of tomato paste, maybe some Italian herbs if you wanted it that flavour. That's the beauty of this. You can make it how you like it uh, just by changing up the things you add to it. So if you want it more Italian style, maybe some garlic and tomato paste. If you want it more Indian style, maybe some more curry powder. Um, add in some different Indian spices perhaps if you've got them on hand. Whatever you like, um, that's what you can add to it. So I'm just going to let this cook away and we'll come back in a little while and add in the rice and then the beans and then lastly the peas. Okay, so now I'm going to add in, it's actually going to be about half the packet of rice, I think. I think a whole packet's probably going to make it too, too much. And this is still partly frozen, so I'm just going to add it and let it thaw out and cook into the rest of the stew as we go. Right, so now the rice has started to be absorbed into the, the liquid. It's actually getting a little bit thick. So I'm going to go ahead and tip in the can of baked beans at this stage. Everything's pretty much cooked now. So I'm just going to heat through these beans. I think I might actually use maybe about half a can of um, water as well, just to make it a little bit more runnier. So I'll come back and add in about half a can of water in a second. Right, so I've got about half a can of water I'm also going to add in. I've actually rinsed out the inside of the can. I always make sure I get every last skerrick of sauce or beans, every little bit out. When you're on a budget, you've got to use it all up. <laughs> so I think that's looking pretty good with the consistency. It just needs a little bit more cooking time, I think, just to meld all the flavours together. And at the very end, I will add in some peas from the can as well. So 
I'm just going to simmer this for a little bit longer. I will also add in some black pepper, just a couple grinds of black pepper and some sea salt as well. And I've got a secret ingredient I usually add in, which I'll show you. <laughs> I, I will reveal all my secrets that I add quite often as well. That gives it just that extra little kick. So I'm just going to add in some black pepper. Quite a few grinds. Mix that in. And I'm also going to put in my top secret ingredient from the fridge. <laughs> this is something I actually got at a food bank um, prior to starting making YouTube videos. Some Tabasco. And I don't put heaps in, I just put a few drops. Just enough to give it a little bit of background heat. I find it's really good. That's my, my secret ingredient. Plus a bit of love. <laughs> so I'm just going to mix that. It's looking pretty good with the consistency. It, you need to get it sort of like, um, I suppose, like a thick soup or stew consistency. So the, the baked bean sauce mixes in with the pumpkin or the sweet potato, depending on what starchy veggies that you use. So that's, that's looking pretty good. I think the carrots are almost done. They might be a little bit firm still. The potato and the pumpkin's well and truly cooked by now. So it's just a matter of cooking it just a little bit longer. And then I'll come back and add in the peas and maybe a final sprinkle of sea salt, I think. Right, so I'm just going to add in the peas now. So I've got the can of drained baby peas. And I'm going to tip that in. I only add these at the end because they're already cooked. And if you add them too soon, they tend to break up. And they we don't really want them mushy we just want them in as a, a final green at the end you could also add your frozen veggies in at this stage and if you wanted to add in any fresh chopped herbs as well so i'm also going to put in a good pinch of sea salt i've got some himalayan pink sea salt this was some i actually got out of food bank as well so very lucky to have all these nice nice ingredients. So some sea salt, a good pinch, or more than a pinch, a good amount going in there. The idea is to make sure everything's well seasoned. And that's pretty much everything in the baked bean stew. So I'm just going to give it a final mix around and then ready to be dished up and here we go we've got the final product now the baked bean stew is ready to be eaten and I've got lots of hungry mouths just sitting and waiting for it now so I'm going to dish some up it's good for winter nights it's really nice and thick and comforting nice and warm uh, it fills you up it might not be the most exciting thing in the world but it yeah it certainly Nice and filling. And I'm going to serve it with, you'll see here, a bread roll. This is a bread roll from the food bank that I actually got today. I'll leave you with a clip of everything that I was lucky enough to pick up this morning from our local food bank. But, yeah, this is um, our baked bean stew <laughs> that I like to make. And I've been making now probably for a couple of years and I find it's a real great way of turning something like a simple can of baked beans into a yummy filling meal to feed your family. I've been doing it now, yeah, for quite a while out of probably necessity more than anything. But um, I actually quite like the taste of it too. And my kids really like eating it as well. I never get any complaints when I make um, baked bean stew. 
Let me know in the comments if you give it a go. I'd be really interested to hear. Or maybe you've got some different ideas how to make it even better, perhaps. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. And I'll put in a clip now of everything I got earlier today. I was fortunate enough to pick up two bags of grainy bread rolls this week. These are six-pack, sort of round-shaped rolls, so they look pretty good. I did also get a three-pack of donuts. These ones I find are really good if you put them in the microwave, say, for 10 seconds or so, just to revive them a bit, heat them up. So they'll, they'll be yummy. I was also lucky to get a lovely fruit loaf again this week. So that's awesome. And something a bit different you'll see here, some wasabi. I like uh, Japanese food. So this one I'm thinking I've got some soy sauce on hand already and plenty of rice. So I might be able to maybe make some sushi or even like a Japanese style uh, bowl of um, rice with different sides to go with it. I like um, wasabi. Let me know, do you like wasabi? It's definitely an unusual one if you've never tried it before. Uh, it's basically horseradish. So if you have uh, too much, it tends to burn right up the back of your nose. <laughs> so a little goes a long way. But yeah, really nice flavour. I like it. So that was so good to get that. I did also get, again, some more um, dressings or mayonnaise. This week, though, a different one. Baconaise, smoky one. This one, it doesn't actually have bacon in it. It's just got, um, just like, I don't know if you can see there, it's got bacon, like smoked flavour. My camera's not going to focus, but it's got like um, smoky flavour in it. So that should be interesting one to try. And I did also get another one of these Peri Peri Mayos, the Nando's one. So that was everything I got this Tuesday. Oh, hang on a minute. Beg your pardon. It wasn't at all. <laughs> How can I forget? There's three boxes of Junior Mints. So, yum. So, yes, that was everything now that I got this Tuesday. So, really helpful and really yummy.